Welcome to the annual raising of the Ukrainian national flag at Queen's Park in celebration of the 30th anniversary of Ukraine independence, which is organized by the Consulate General of Ukraine and the League of Ukrainian Canadians. Today, standing in the heart of Ontario at Queen's Park, we mark a significant date for Ukraine as an independent and prosperous young democratic state with a rich history and the wealthy culture. Let's begin the official ceremony of flag raising. Небесний Отче, ми сьогодні дякуємо тобі за дар незалежності, водночас дарований тобою, і здобути відважними державними мужами і жінками у любові до свого українського народу. В цьому історичному акті ми бачимо твій палець і дію твого Святого Духа. Ми розуміємо, що цей дар також кладе на наше покоління велику відповідальність. Він вимагає глибокого відчуття спільного блага коштом особистих інтересів, соціальної справедливості, готовності до саможертви, зваженого прийняття викликів часу і творчого пошуку розв'язки на різні економічні і суспільні проблеми. Господи Ісусе Христе, наверни нинішніх ворогів України від своїх ненависних і злочинних намірів та всели в їхні серця духа розуму і страху Божого. Тримай в своїй опіці тих, які сьогодні на сході України захищають твій дар незалежності. Дай їм відчути твою безнастанну присутність і нашу до них вдячність і любов. Bless Ukraine's many friends, including those gathered here today. Help them continue to appreciate that freedom can never be taken for granted. And that when a freedom-loving people in one part of the world is threatened by the misguided and destructive imperialistic ambitions of its neighbor, that threatens freedom-loving people everywhere. For every perfect gift is from above coming down from you, the Father of Lights. I mi tobi slavu, blagodarnje poklonenje vosilajemo Otcu i Sinu i Svjetomu Duhovi, njeni i po vsek čas i na vike viki. Amin. Members of Provincial Parliament, Consul General, Honored guests, ladies and gentlemen. Dobrydin. It is my great pleasure as Speaker of the Legislative Assembly of Ontario to join you today as together we celebrate the 30th anniversary of Ukraine's National Day. I know that I speak for all 124 members when I say how delighted we are that you're here at Queen's Park, the seat of government in Ontario, and the majestic symbol of parliamentary democracy in our province. On August 24, 1991, the Ukraine Parliament declared Ukraine as an independent democratic state from the Soviet Union. Canada was the first nation in the Western world to recognize Ukraine's independence. And we're very happy to be here with you today to commemorate the 30th anniversary of this important occasion. Together we can share in celebrating Ukraine's rich history and vibrant culture. This is also an opportunity to acknowledge the contributions made by Ukrainian Canadians to our country. Their contributions span communities across Ontario and are reflected in our economic, political, social and cultural life. In recognition of that, in 2011, the Legislative Assembly of Ontario, Bill 155 was passed and the Act proclaimed September 7th in each year as Ukrainian Heritage Day. This date, referring to the official Ukrainian immigrants, who first arrived here in Canada on September 7, 1891. Since then, many more Ukrainians have adopted Canada as their home. And Canada now has a population of approximately 1.3 million members of the Ukrainian community. Outside Europe, 
This is the largest Ukrainian diaspora. Together today, we celebrate our success. We're all very proud of our Ukrainian community here in Ontario, and we'd like to thank you for all that you've done for our province. We are very happy to be able to host events like this one at Queen's Park and celebrate our multiculturalism. And at this time, it's my honour to call forward the Consul General of Ukraine in Toronto, Mr. Alexandra Shevchenko, to present a certificate on recognition of this special day. And the scroll reads as follows. In celebration of Ukraine's National Day, 30th anniversary, it's my great pleasure on behalf of the Legislative Assembly of Ontario to send you our heartfelt congratulations on this important occasion. Thank you and happy Independence Day. Today we join the Ukrainian community in Ontario and around the world to celebrate 30 years of Ukrainian independence. It is my distinct pleasure to stand up here with you all today on this historic occasion. 30 years ago today, the Parliament of Ukraine declared independence from the Soviet Union. As the first Western nation to recognize them as an independent nation, our country has a long-standing friendship with the people of Ukraine, who for generations have made an immense impact on our province's economic, social, and political foundations. On behalf of the government of Ontario, I wish everyone a happy Ukrainian Independence Day. Slava Ukraini. Good afternoon. Greetings to the Consul General, to our, my colleagues, to the speaker, my colleagues from the federal side, and to all members of the Ukrainian community. It is so wonderful to be back here again in person to have the flag of Ukraine raised in front of the Ontario Legislature. On behalf of the leader of the official opposition, Andrea Horvath, and my colleagues from the New Democratic Party of, uh, of Canada, I would like to wish the people of Ukraine and all people who trace their ancestry and heritage to Ukraine a very happy 30th Independence Day. As was mentioned, thank you. As was mentioned, I represent the great riding of Parkdale High Park. Now, I don't know how many of you are from Parkdale High Park, but many of you know that the riding historically has had a very strong presence of the Ukrainian community. Generations of Ukrainians have called Parkdale High Park home. On behalf of Andrew Horvath and the NDP, we extend our congratulations and best wishes to Ontario's Ukrainian Canadians on the occasion of the flag raising ceremony at Queen's Park in commemoration of Ukraine National Day. Slava Ukraini! Vitaju vas znem nezaleznosti Ukraine. 30 years ago, Ukraine declared its independence from the Soviet Union. Seven years ago, however, Russia invaded Crimea and eastern Ukraine, and today's Ukrainians are once again fighting to defend their independence. Just as we did when we were in government, our Liberal Caucus will continue to work to support Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. When we were in government, we took a number of steps. For example, Premier Wynne met with the President and the Prime Minister of Ukraine to discuss how Ontario could support Ukraine's reforms and support its fight against Russia's invasion. Our government, our government signed a memorandum of understanding with the Ukrainian government to help reform the Ukrainian healthcare system. As part of that work, our Minister of Health, Eric Hoskins, and MPP Yvonne Baker visited Ukraine, met with the President of Ukraine, and worked with the Minister of Health and other officials to help implement reforms. Please rest assured that the Ontario Liberal Caucus will continue to do that work, as we have in the past, to support a free, prosperous, and independent Ukraine. Many chest bute zvame vdeng. Slava Ukraini. Thank you. We have reached the moment to raise the Ukrainian flag. The national anthems of Ukraine and Canada will be played.
independence was a dream for many generations of Ukrainians, for those living in Ukraine and for those abroad. They carried that dream through centuries of Russian Tsarist Empire, through Gulag camps, through the artificial famines orchestrated by the Stalin's regime. Yet Ukrainians didn't just dream, they fought hard and persistently for the dream to come true. And unfortunately, this fight is still going ongoing 30 years after the proclamation of the independence of Ukraine. Fortunately, we are not alone in our struggle. We enjoy the support of our European partners, our friends across the Atlantic. In this regard, I would like to mention Canada's unwavering support of Ukraine, both bilaterally and on the international forums, in the UN General Assembly, the UN Security Council, in the OECE, NATO, and the G7. Canada is actively implementing a number of projects in Ukraine, aimed at strengthening the resilience of Ukrainian economy, reforming the judicial system, police, empowering women, and training Ukrainian soldiers within the Unifier mission. And we are immensely grateful to the people and the government of Canada for that. Ladies and gentlemen, yesterday, the president of Ukraine officially launched the Crimea platform, which was attended by representatives, heads of states and governments of 46 states, who did not recognize the results of so-called referendum in Crimea in 2014. The platform aimed to unite the efforts of many nations around the world to address the urgent challenges of ongoing militarization of Crimea by the Russian Federation, the nuclear proliferation in the Black Sea region, the persecution of Crimean Tatars by the occupying authorities, and finally, to work out the ways to peacefully return Crimea to Ukraine within its internationally recognized borders. Today we also celebrate the Day of National Flag, the symbol of our nation and identity. Let our flag proudly fly and inspire all of us for new achievements. Vitae znem praporu ta znem nezaležnosti Ukrajini. Slava Ukrajini, glory to Ukraine. Slava Ukrajini! Dobry den, vitaju vas sik znem nezaležnosti Ukrajini. I greet you all with on Ukraine's Independence Day. Uh, my name is Ivan Baker, I'm the MP for Etobicoke Centre, as, as was mentioned, and I'm also the chair of the Canada-Ukraine Parliamentary Friendship Group, with it, which is a group of MPs from all parties who work together to support Ukraine and to build closer relationships between Canada and Ukraine, um, and uh, I'm so pleased to be here today with all of you. It's a great accomplishment to celebrate because so much has been accomplished in those past 30 years in Ukraine to enhance the quality of life for Ukrainian people. And we always, I think, on this day look forward to a brighter future for Ukraine. But as we speak, Ukrainian men and women are risking everything and sacrificing their lives to defend the very independence we're here to celebrate today. And MPs of all parties have supported measures to support Ukraine's independence, its sovereignty, its territorial integrity, whether that be sanctions against Russian officials, whether that be training of Ukrainian troops, whether that be supporting Ukraine's integration into NATO, whether that be consistent statements uh, supporting Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity, whether that be pushing back when it was proposed that Russia should rejoin the G7, Canada pushed back on that, whether that be investing in supporting Ukraine to help it in its reforms, whether that be in the reform of its judiciary or its police or its military and many other areas as well. So, Canada's support for Ukraine's sovereignty is unwavering. But let me say this, as we celebrate today, I hope that we walk away with a commitment to redouble our efforts, to recommit ourselves to supporting the Ukrainian men and women who are defending Ukraine's independence, to support the Ukrainian people in their fight for their independence and their territorial integrity. Because if we do that, we will not only be able to celebrate Ukraine's independence for 30 years or for another year, but forever, here at Queen's Park, across Ontario, and across Canada. Slava Ukraini! I think it's appropriate to gather here today in celebration, the day after we commemorated Black Ribbon Day, to remember the millions of lives lost to communism and to Nazism. It's important I believe for all Canadians to remember as we mark this 30th anniversary of Ukrainian independence why Russia invaded eastern Ukraine 
and occupied Crimea in 2014, and supports still its proxy rebellion by the toll of death, displacement, and destruction continues. As we here today all know, it all comes down to democratic choice. Because after the collapse of the Soviet Union and the end of the Cold War, the people of Ukraine, along with those of many of the former oppressed Soviet republics, chose democracy and the West. Vladimir Putin couldn't avoid, abide that choice and eventually invaded with jackboot force. But at the same time in 2014, Western democracies stepped up. Canada, assisting Ukraine, uh, enhance its uh, defensive military capabilities to bolster the uh, democratic processes from traffic police to the judiciary to the parliament of Ukraine, and to encourage the continuing economic renewal and trade with Canada. So today, as Ukraine stands strong, defending its independence, and as NATO guards clearly defined red lines around the Baltic states and Poland, Putin's belligerent support of the last dictatorship of Europe, the illegitimate Lukashenko regime in Belarus, is a cruel reminder of Putin's Stalinesque dreams of reclaimed greater imperial Russia. It is incumbent on all democracies today to maintain eternal vigilance against Putin's grotesque, tyrannical ambitions. But today, Canadians join with Ukrainians, with Ukrainian Canadians here in Canada and in Ukraine in celebrating a magnificent choice courageously made 30 years ago. On behalf of the Conservative Party of Canada and on behalf of Aaron O'Toole, the leader of Her Majesty's loyal opposition, for now, Slava Ukraine. On behalf of the League of Ukrainian Canadians and League of Ukrainian Canadian Women, I would like to sincerely thank all of you for the contribution you have made to today's flag raising ceremony. This year's observance marks the 30th anniversary of that moment in Ukraine's history when the Ukrainian people achieved historical justice and their rightful place in the comedy of nations. This year's observance is also important because Ukrainians worldwide are commemorating the 88th anniversary of the Holodomor, the Ukrainian genocide of 1932-1933, perpetrated by the Soviet Russian regime under Stalin against the Ukrainian people. We bow our heads in memory of the victims. The genocide of the Ukrainian people resulted in millions of deaths and further persecution the trauma of the whole Holodomor, the prohibition of speech regarding it, coupled with the resettling of ethnic Russians to replace the Ukrainians killed by famine, all led to a process of russification, which today has become the pretext for Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine. Under the false claim, he is defending Russian speakers. More than 1.8 million internal refugees have fled from Ukrainian territory, invaded and occupied by Russia, to safe regions under Ukraine's control. And yet, Ukraine has persevered with the support of its friends, especially Canada. In particular, we thank the personnel of the Canadian Armed Forces deployed to Ukraine on Operation Unifier, Canada's military training mission. And therefore, as Canada and Ukraine move forward together to stop further Russian aggression, there can be no room for failure. 
Over the past two years, Ukraine has made considerable progress in pushing through badly needed, important reforms that serve as pillars in Ukraine's development as a political nation. And with Canada's support, Ukraine will continue to push through further reforms that will eventually complete the democratic process of the establishment of a more fair and just society. The completion and utilization of Nord Stream 2 by Russia is an existential threat to Ukraine and other European countries in the region and must be stopped. The raising of Ukraine's national flag at Queen's Park today is of utmost importance and a reaffirmation of Canada's recognition of the Ukrainian people's great sacrifice on the arduous road to freedom and Canada's support for an independent, democratic, secure and prosperous Ukraine. And for this, we the Ukrainian community are forever grateful. Glory to Canada. Slava Ukraine.